red test. Sweet. Sour. So good the test. Hi, and welcome to Great Taste. I'm Steve Boss, and who's this? Kathy Dubois. I knew. Did you me? Sometimes it happens. I mean, I don't. I try not to, but you know how it is. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. <laughs> oh, sorry, that doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, this is Great Taste on KRUU FM 100.1, the Solar Power Voice of Fairfield, Iowa. We're very excited to have you here. If you are actually here at High V, and if you're listening on the stream. We're absolutely thrilled. And Sarah, you can make as much noise as you like. We don't care. It's it's good. You're here, and we're going to enjoy having this trem Drown Steve out. That would be a good thing. <laughs> oh, I I see. I see we're starting off very nicely already. That's that's good. We've got a whole hour of this to come come uh you know, see how, how many more times we can kind of, you know. Right. Mm. Dig each other. right, exactly. It's perfect. So I want to introduce everyone who's on the show because we have so many different people here. First of all, we have our students from Indian Hills. Please give them a big hand. You guys can raise your hand and everybody who's listening on the radio or on their computer, they can they can probably see you then. So Savannah Strode, Kelly Kinsler, Chanel Wallace, Sarah Valentine, one who's always here. Kurt Gowdy, who's always here. Thank you, Kurt. And Kelly Vetter, who's sometimes here. And we're happy to, we're happy to have all of you. Terrific. And they're all, as I said, students at the Indian Hills Culinary Program. And uh, what a great program. And we're thrilled to have them. And they are going to be doing a wide variety of things. And I think, let's see, let's see if I get them all properly, uh, mentioned. So we have Sarah is going to be doing caramels. Nope, that's wrong, wrong. Okay, you're going to be doing? I am going to be doing dark chocolate truffles. Oh, okay, that's fine. You can do those. <laughs> We're absolutely fine. So, uh, Kelly is going to be doing caramels, right? Okay, that's good. And these three ladies, Chanel and Kelly and Savannah, are going to be doing cupcakes because I happened to talk to Kurt earlier today and I said, Kurt, I got to have some cupcakes. I, I just got to have some cupcakes. Uh, my wife and I watch Cupcake Wars, I mean, almost every night because we record it and we have all these episodes to watch. And every time we watch that, sorry, I was going to say something. Every time we watch that show, which I think is just so cute, uh, <laughs> I just want a cupcake. Really, I just have a terrible desire that I just can't ever get one. And, and I want a really good cupcake, not just any cupcake, because you're watching these people who are professionals and they're really doing all this really intricate intricate things with with uh, desserts and I want a really really good cupcake so thank you all for helping us out here by, by doing this all right also on the show tonight Frank Lotz who is all coming here all the way from Germany and is the author of Heavenly Cooking with Ayurveda Frank welcome to Great Taste good evening from Germany to America we're so happy to have you, and we'll be talking with you in just a few minutes. Uh, Jan Swinton, our local food coordinator, is here along with her, <laughs> her grasses or salads. Right, right. Her garden. Yes, we have uh, sunflower sprouts I recognize, and we also have peas. Wonderful. And, and radishes. Great. Peas, radishes, and sunflower sprouts. But these are not sprouts. These are shoots, and you're going to tell us exactly what the differences are between shoots and sprouts and why <laughs> why that guy in the back Eric Lop should be eating these <laughs> okay uh, let's see Lenora Boyle is here Lenora is has just recently returned from Italy and I asked her if she would share some of her eating adventures in Italy so we're going to Really enjoy that. If any of you read my blog post, which I have no idea if anybody ever reads, I was, I was, oh, you read it? Oh, and you read it? Two people. That's great. Uh, <laughs> anyway, my wife read it, so that's three. Anyway, uh, I was daydreaming about going to a particular part of Italy, and I better not get into it. I might start sighing and crying and who knows what else, you know, and I don't want to do that. I don't want to embarrass myself on the show. I do that enough as it is. So we have all kinds of great things, as you can 
tell that are going to happen, including these marble slabs that are going to be there for the truffles. Is that right? Or what? What are they there for? For tempering chocolate. Tempering chocolate, lovely, for the truffles. This is for Kurt's um, peanut butter cups. Oh my gosh, we forgot about Kurt's peanut butter cups. How could you? How in the world? That's just totally ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, so we're definitely going to enjoy some peanut butter cups. And Frank is going to be making us one of the recipes from his book. And it's a recipe for a coconut lassi. So I'm not going to even, and I'm not going to tell on you about what happened when you came to my house this afternoon and had your brown lassi. I'm not going to tell. So oh, it's, yes. It's a this secret. This is a secret. Right. I <laughs> can tell you what I mean with a brown lassi. <laughs> <laughs> this is a secret word for a good cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? You know what, Frank? I decided that I needed to share with everybody something about that because we were talking about it a little bit. I, I went to, I was in a sur la table a few weeks ago. And they have, as you know, in most of these cooking stores, they have these incredibly expensive machines. Sur la table, it was, well, it's in St. Louis. There's like, I don't know, 30 or 40 of them all over the country. They're like Williams-Sonoma. And they, they have these very expensive cappuccino, uh, espresso machines, basically. And they were giving away free cappuccini with uh, because they want you to buy the espresso machine. So they had one they were using. It was $2,200, and there was a real special, you know, it was like $500 off if you buy it today or whatever it was. Who knows? Anyway, and they were using Ely Cafe beans. And Ely is a good, it's, they're a good roaster, I mean, a good maker of coffee, and these beans were being roasted right there in the machine. And so I said, sure, I'll try it. I had, of course, no intention to buy that machine. But I tried it, and I have to say, Let's just put it this way. What I wanted to say to everyone is if you want a really good cup of coffee at home, all you have to do is go buy a $20 mocha, right? It's a stovetop espresso maker. That's what it is. That's what almost every home in Italy has a mocha. And if you buy that and you buy good coffee or good coffee beans, you're going to make a better cup of coffee than you're going to get if you invest $2,000, and I guarantee that. So... You, you can enjoy that. And and you thought it was pretty good, didn't you? Oh, I felt, I tell you, a good cappuccino, like, it enlivened me totally. You know? <laughs> <laughs> My brain was totally awake, and uh, I'm still awake, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> that would happen with a bad cappuccino, too, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know, Kathy had a good point. She said, wouldn't that happen with a bad cappuccino also, though? <laughs> no, it wouldn't happen. Doesn't it have no. a lot to do with the caffeine in the co coffee? Yes, it is really enlivens your heart. You know, maybe sometimes if somebody not wakes up, give him a good of cup of Gino, he will be lively again. You know? Right. right. <laughs> but as see, good as it, Christ would touch him, you know. If it's a bad one, you wouldn't drink it. So that's the difference. Right. You know, that that's absolutely the difference. Okay, so we better get going here. I don't know whether are, are you waiting for me? Is that what's going on here before you guys get started? Because I want to make sure we get these cupcakes. So Kelly, you know, are, tell us a little bit about what about what you're going to do. All right. Well, we're just going to make some pumpkin cupcakes that hopefully will turn out cupcake war worthy. <laughs> hopefully? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Otherwise, okay. you know what happens. You know, it's a different show, but you're going to get chopped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so so looking forward to that. So you're going to, you you just, uh, anytime you like, just go ahead and start. And now, will you guys be actually filling these two, or is it just going to be a solid cupcake topped with icing? These are just a solid cupcake topped with icing. What do I have to do to get a filled one? Ask. Uh, would you please make some that we could fill? Sure, no problem. What, what's in the, the chip bag? Is that part of the ingredients uh, for the cupcakes? No, that's another thing. That's, I mean, I guess I should have saved some things, right? I mean, this show is like chock full. This, uh, that's Tom Allen, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. We're glad you're here. You let us know, and we're happy because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got great music for us to enjoy while we're while we're doing the show. Jason Strong is here from FMC recording everything on TV, which is really actually extremely scary that people can actually watch watch us make well whatever. Anyway, I made this. Yes, I made this actually today. This is my first attempt at a vegan cheese. And actually, I have no idea why they call it cheese, uh, none whatsoever. And But Rebecca, my daughter, has been really getting into making vegan cheeses. And I had three different ones on Sunday that she made. They were absolutely outrageous. They were delicious, but they certainly were nothing, didn't have anything to do with cheese. You know, they were just 
vegan cheeses. And, and again, I'm, I'm not sure where the whole thing comes in in terms of cheese, but, but uh, they were really, really good. And she used, one of them, she used pickle juice from her pickling, from her pickling pickles. And uh, that, that was really, really, really good. And so I thought, oh, you know what, I'll try my hand at it and see what it's like. So this is my first attempt and I brought it because I want comments. I want to see what people think it should have, you know, what, where we need to get better. Because it's definitely not anything, you know, if you, somebody said, oh, what do you think of it? I would say, you know, it's all right. I mean, it's okay, but hers were really good. She made three different versions, as I said. And today she was making one with fresh herbs, uh, which sounded great. But I was afraid of the water today, raining, and I didn't go outside and pick any. So I just used dried ones. Because, you know, it's like the Wicked Witch of the West, I might melt. So anyway, well, you have, if you if you want to if you want to talk and get laughs, you're gonna have to get really close to Sarah because you're not on the mic. How do you like that? She tried to make a snotty remark and and and, and nobody heard it. So I'll go find out what she said. I, I bet you would. Okay. So all right. So we're in the yes in the vegan whatever that is. There uh, are cashews that I soaked for about 12 hours. I then added three, a one tablespoon of miso, and that's supposed to have, have a fermenting uh, element. It's a fermenting element. And so then I put it in a warm spot for another 10 hours. And then I started adding, I added oregano, thyme, garlic, shallot, and uh, pepper and salt and red peppers and olive oil, sweet red peppers and olive oil. So, uh, you know, we'll try it with some chips and people give me, you know, your input. Uh, but I'm not, a, I'm not, that's not, that's way far away from my comfort zone in terms of vegan cooking. So <laughs> it was my first, first shot at it. And uh, we'll, we'll see how, what, what people think. Okay. So what's happening over here right now? All right. Well, we're making our pumpkin cupcakes, we've started them. Um, we've got all of our dry ingredients sifted into a bowl for you, so we don't have to watch and take time on that. All it is is nutmeg, ginger, flour, baking powder, baking soda, salt, and cinnamon. And that is in this bowl right here. And then we are starting to cream the butter and sugar together because that is the next step in our process. And we're working on beating some eggs and everything is measured out for you, everybody, so it takes less time for you. Okay, so. and we, we probably would be able to post this recipe if we like it, right? Okay, yeah. we, we, we can do that. And by the way, those of you who are listening can't actually see this, but Ke <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Vetter was very kind to, she knows how much I like recipes because I don't ever post any, and so she was kind enough to write out her recipe and write it in a large enough format that I probably won't be able to lose it. So this is for the caramels and they will, that will get posted in the next couple of days on the website. So I think that we better get rocking and rolling here. But first of all, I want to just ask if anyone has an ability to log into the internet and can tell me whether or not the Cardinals won or if the rain delay is over, I would appreciate that report sometime during the show because when I came in, it was the bottom of the seventh and there was a rain delay in St. Louis and the Cardinals were winning three to one. So. Anybody that can do that, I would appreciate uh, seeing uh, or hearing those results. Okay, so Lenora Boyle, where are you? Come on in. Come on up. <laughs> Will you tell us a little bit about your travels? Because I want to hear, just tell us about some of your, oh, you, what do you have there? I brought you something. Oh. Pecorino from Sicily. Oh, nice. Do we have to share it? It's very sharp. No, this is just for you. <laughs> you know, that's really mean, by the way, because you're in front of an audience of people. Once <laughs> thank you next time i'll bring more <laughs> okay so thank you very much i'm very excited about that this is really interesting looking it's got black pepper in it peppercorns yes yeah. that i have to say that i remember as one of my most treasured cheese experiences was having a friend of mine salvatore dinaro who has a place in umbria called il baco felice and he's a crazy guy. We've talked about him on here before. And I was at Salone del Gusto one year, and he had some cheese exactly like that from Sicily with the peppercorns, and it was outrageous. 
It's very strong cheese. Oh. Strong cheese makes strong people. That's right. Well, I bought the cheese in Sicily because all over Italy there are outdoor markets. And they have everything from fish to fruit, flowers, all kinds of meat, olive oil, anything you can imagine. You have vegetables, fruit, orange juice. And you're just, it's like a museum. And I told my husband, I could just cry. This is so beautiful, right? So we bought some cheese because we didn't have much room in our suitcase. So, so tell us about just if you want everybody to just kind of like fall over in their chairs, what, what was the one or two most outstanding food experiences you had? Well, I wrote, it's hard to do that, but something, a couple things that were unusual. And one thing was called raviola, not ravioli. It's not pasta. And it was in Sicily. It's a pastry-like croissant. And inside was warm ricotta cheese. It was probably made that morning. It, oh, for sure made that morning. And the ricotta cheese is local, of course. And probably sheep milk, I would imagine. I think it was sheep milk. And they just added cinnamon, clove, and some sugar. And it's just, they made it right then, and it's hot. The whole thing is warm, and it was just melt in your mouth experience. So that's the first time I've ever had raviola, right? <laughs> then in Luca. I'm speechless. I know. Then in Luca, which is northern Tuscany. Thank you for that report. In one of the piazzas, they had food. And this is not Ayurvedic, probably. But it's donuts, fried donuts, stuffed with Nutella. And you know Nutella is chocolate hazelnut. And then in the dough of the donut is zest of oranges. So you're just, and every time I, I bring a group of women there every September, so every time I would say, tell somebody, you have to go try this donut, which I don't usually eat donuts. And they would all come back just raving. My husband joined us later, and he had chocolate all over his face, dripping down because it's just scrumptious. So I'm trying to get someone here locally to start making those and sell those. Should be easy. Uh, maybe later. It's a good idea uh, that they should make their own chocolate hazelnut spread rather than yes. the store-bought kind. Yes, because sometimes there's some preservative or some additives. In there. Well, let's put it this way. Nutella's ingredients are not the greatest. Uh -huh. All right. Do you know how to make it? It's not that difficult to make a chocolate hazelnut spread. Okay. So, but, but I think a professional would be better than me. So, I, I'm a professional eater. Maybe we can get some of these... <laughs> students to make that. Now that is a great idea. We should that should be a challenge. There's a future show. A challenge thrown out to some of you guys in terms of yeah, we bring the ingredients. We'll bring the ingredients and have them make something. Oh, you're up for it? Okay. All right. This sounds good. We can, we can do that. Now the last thing and I had never eaten this before was granita. Do you know granita? I know granita shaved ice. Yes. So this granita, again it was in Sicily. It's a blend of almond milk, and they make their own almond milk, of course. Lots of almonds grow in Sicily. Sugar, toasted almonds, you know, fresh almonds. Then I wrote down almond paste, not marzipan, so lots of almond. And they do freeze it. But when they serve it, it's not frozen, and it's not slushy like a slushy that we have in the U.S., just slightly thawed. Oh, my gosh. And that was made fresh at the cafe there. Then, there's before you Before you go on, I just want to just say, the one thing is that if you've never had almond milk in Sicily, then you've never had almond milk. Because whatever they sell in the United States that they call almond milk, I have no idea what it is. It's water or something like that. I mean, but, but almond milk in Sicily is absolutely luscious. So just the last thing, then I went to a cafe, and what they did with the granita, they put two scoops of granita in espresso. So that was cafe freddo, cold coffee, but oh my gosh, to have almond flavor in the espresso. Frank's listening. <laughs> <laughs> so those are my, part of my experiences because I could talk about food forever. Thank you so much yeah. because you've made me very happy and probably everybody else. Thank you, Lenora. Thank you. Okay. And, and you know, Frank, this, this really plays into what we were talking about today when you were over at the house because we were talking about if the primary result of eating 
is creating this joy and happiness within you, you can't go wrong. This is Ayurveda. You know, you got wrong with Ayurveda. Ayurveda means everything what is tasting well and you like it and afterwards you feel well is Ayurveda. So, Ayurveda is not something rigid and you have eaten Ayurveda in Sicily. Yes. Very good. <laughs> I love his interpretation. <laughs> it's absolutely great. It, it's true. It's absolutely right. And I think that that's, that's, there aren't too many people, I've never met anybody who's explained it like you do. And I think that that's really such a great point because Ayurveda is just the knowledge of creating that happiness. That's right. All health system which has this not included happiness, you can forget about it, you know. Like like people they eat a whole life healthy and everything and are rigid and they are looking like you know? yeah. life is bliss and we have to enjoy. We are here born, we are lucky good humans and we are happy to be here, you know. Yes. And this is Ayurveda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Now many of you probably know, uh, and if you don't know, we can talk about it for a second. That in Ayurveda, as a po when we talk about health, that Ayurveda kind of breaks down the body types into three different body types. And Frank has a very interesting way of explaining those body types, and I wonder if you would share that with us. Yes, it would be great, Joe. You know, actually, I'm coming from a family tradition. In six or seven generations, we had restaurants. And when I was 17, I started to meditate. And by nature, nobody forced me. I became a vegetarian. The first year, my brother became a vegetarian, and I was eating his Wiener Schnitzel. You know, I said, "How are you, a stupid guy?" You know. <laughs> Still, I was meditating. But after a while, I became a vegetarian. And my father said, "No, we have very good cooks. But I need somebody who 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 is working in the meat factory." I said, "No, Daddy, I gonna do that. I love the the animals too much." So I went the other way. I became a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but now this will help me to understand what are the three energies are, the three different types. Like, you know, if you're going with a big lorry, a very heavy one, we call it in Germany a diesel engine. The old ones, first you have to, you know, to, they, they had to, has to make it warm and then we started it. You remember the old diesels? You know, first you wait a little bit and then it goes on. It has a lot of energy and it can take everybody even three cars it can take behind. And then we have a Maserati. In Germany, you know, we have the Michael Schumacher. He was one of the best uh, Formula One drivers. And still now, this year, he will retire. So he goes from 100 to, from zero to 100 meters in three seconds. And this engine we call Otto motor, the normal gasoline. He needs a lot of reducing the heat because the engines go very quickly high. That means this is a Peter type. Somebody very quickly goes high. So this Maserati or Ferrari from Michael Schumacher is like the Pitta energy people. This Kaffa type, the lorry, which take a long time, but has a lot of energy. This is Kaffa, we call. And then we have some people that are very fine and sensitive. And this, now we have today, you know, the electronic cars, the car with electro engine. Oh, after 50 kilometers or 30 miles, they stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the big lorry comes and say, come on, hey, Willem, I take you, you know, because this Kaffa, he has so much energy. So Vata is like the electric car, and Pitta is like the Maserati or Ferrari, and Kaffa is like this lorry, which have a lot of energy. So, and today we have the hybrid car. How you call it, hybrid? Hip hybrid. Hybrid. You know, it has some some normal uh, gasoline and also some electro car. So this is would be called Pitta and Vata. So, you know, now you get maybe, you know, how am I a, a lorry or am I a, a very sm a fine, smart electronic car with engine of electricity or am I like a Michael Schumacher, need something to cool down. And some, you know, we are mixture people, you know, like the hybrid cars. So in Ayurveda, we know how to handle these people with different kinds. We have six tastes, sweet, sour, bitter, salty, and hot. Like uh, what is not good for you, like the pita type of people, they're already hot, so we have to give not them, not cold food, but something which is choosing the heat in them. Like when you have cut yourself in the kitchen a bit, taking then a lemon, lemon is sour, what ha ha happens with your hands? It hurts. If you put salt on it, it hurts, and some something hot like a chili, 
chopped and it, it hurt. So all these three types which is hurting you are not good for the pitta type. And like the water people, they, they need more salt because they are, um, their digestive system is not that strong as salt is supporting the digestive system. But they don't like hot because hot is not good for them. And also what is not good for them is bitter. So, and the kapha type is totally different. It's like the shiny system of yin and yang, you know? In uh, kapha and vata, you remember, is the opposite. Kapha is very slowly, vata is very quick in thinking. So, whatever is good for the kapha people, like they like hot food, they like um, spicy food, they like, uh, they like um, bitter, and... Uh, and pungent, right. <laughs> and the opposite, now what is left over? Sour, sweet, and, and salty is good for water. Now, very, not very nice. And everything what is hurting you is not good for the bitter type. So, but one thing remember, never be rigid. Ayurveda is not in accordance with people who are, you know, so bored in their mind. They think only my thing is the best way. So be open in your life and Listen to your body. After a while, you know what is good for you, and always go by your taste, what you like, and afterwards how you feel good. Like also, if you have drinking good wine, you know the next day you know whether it was a good one or a bad. One. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's. I love that, Frank. I, I I think one of the things that's interesting is that in Ayurveda, don't you try to incorporate those six tastes when you have a meal, so that you your meal has all those tastes in it? Yes. And, and never forget that even the kapha type, he likes to have sweet, but only the main importance is on hot, bitter, and astringent. Yes? But they also like to eat sweet. Why we, we all humans like to eat sweet? Because mother has grown up with her sweet milk. And that's why everything which is tasting sweet, by nature, we love. And that's why the ladies are the best cooks in the world. We men try to do what we never get up with the mothers, you know? Totally agree. Totally agree. We've had that discussion here so many times about women and men and the different approaches in the kitchen. We try to be bold, but I we know. never get you, ladies. Never. I never. You. you agree? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we're you gonna... agree with me? I hope so, you do. Yes. I'm going to get back to you a little bit later. Yes. We're going to talk about, we're going to make some lassi. Yes. But who's, Sarah, are you ready to take over now? All right, Sarah Valentine. By the way, you're listening to Great Taste on KRUU 100.1 FM, the solar-powered voice of Fairfield, Iowa, and you are attuned to the most delicious 60 minutes on the radio. Tom Allen, what do you have to what do you have to say? What does your guitar have to say? Hopefully, it's not weeping, right? Your guitar isn't gently weeping. Everybody's supposed to laugh. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you, sir. All right, Sarah Valentine, what's up? Well, I am making dark chocolate truffles. What I've done is I've taken three ounces of cream and I just heated it until it just barely, barely came to a boil. That's a really delicate process because it's easy to scald the bottom of it. You have to be really careful and take it off the heat right away and keep it moving. I didn't use a spoon, I just swirled my pan. And then I had four ounces of some nice dark chocolate chopped up in this bowl. And what I did, I just took that hot cream and I poured it over my chocolate and it's, it's melting, you can see. What I'm doing is I'm making, I'm making chocolate ganache, which is the base for my truffle. And it should melt all the way just from having the warm cream poured over it as long as I keep stirring it. And then what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator and let it chill all the way. And after this is melted together, the cream and the chocolate is, is together and that makes it softer because you know when you put a bar of chocolate in the fridge, it's, it's hard and brittle. 
But since this has got the cream in it, once it gets cold, it will still be soft and it'll be moldable. And that's how we will be able to, and you can see it's nice and smooth now. It was very grainy when I started, but it's smooth now. And basically for our listeners, you're just continuing to stir. You've used yep. that warm cream to get the melting process moving and to continue it, you just keep stirring yep, and stirring. I just keep folding, just folding it together until it's all mixed together and the chocolate is all melted. And I'm gonna put it in the fridge and when I take it out, even though it's gonna be cold, it's going to be still moldable and I'm gonna roll it into balls and then I'm going to um, just roll it in cocoa powder to finish it. You can do this, I'm doing it with dark chocolate, you can do it with milk chocolate and you can do it with white chocolate, but you have to reduce the amount of cream because there is more sugar and more milk solids and more fat, cocoa butter, in milk chocolate and white chocolate. There's no cocoa solids in white chocolate at all, which is what is keeping it stiff. And anyway, dark chocolate's the only chocolate, so just forget about it, just, just make it this way. Um, you can also, instead of rolling them in cocoa butter, you can dip them in tempered chocolate. You can melt some more chocolate and temper it on a marble slab, and then you can dip it. But I think that the cocoa powder is more rustic, older style, um, more authentic, more personal look, and I think, it, I think it tastes better. When you eat it, I mean, the cocoa powder is very bitter, but you put it on your tongue and you get the bitter hit, but then as it melts, it becomes sweet, and I think it... It really plays a part in enriching your experience of eating the chocolate truffles. I think it sounds very Ayurvedic, don't you? Oh, absolutely Ayurvedic. Don't you agree, Frank? Yes, of course. <laughs> Everything what gives you happiness is good, you know. Exactly. That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> if there's an Ayurvedic society, we're probably going to be banned by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jan Swinton, can you come up and tell us about we are, Kathy and I were we we this is like carpet, like lovely carpet. You just want to touch it. Yeah, they're, they're, I am. And smell. The smell is wonderful. Eat it. it just yeah, feels we're, so we're gonna we're to gonna eat. do that in a minute. The, the, it's just wonderful to eat. So describe these shoots. Okay, we we took a, a plastic tray with a little bit of drainage in the bottom. We put in about an inch of vermicompost mixed with coconut coir, and we, mixed with coconut what? Coir. It's uh, the coconut husk that's all grated up into really small bits. Um, you can also use vermiculite. It, it's just kind of the inert in there that holds water, but it won't hold bacteria. Where do you get, where do you get the coconut, whatever it was? Coir, C-O-I-R, coir. Um, you can get it at any uh, farm store. It, it's all over the place. And I actually bought mine on Amazon. So you can get it in little bricks. Comes, you know, a pound in a brick. Um, so you get that moist and then uh, actually the, the center one is my favorite right now because it's just the right size for eating. Center one is sunflower and it's so really wonderful to actually see the little sunflower seeds still on the end of the small leaves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely delicious. So this is the favorite one at the schools. Kids love this. It's nice and sweet. Um, and this was planted a week ago Monday, so this is day nine or ten. And so they are getting kind of tall. Um, the sunflowers do, the, the seed hull um, continues up and comes up with it. And then if you look real closely, Steve, the, um, in the... Jan, can I just stop you for one sec? Because yeah. I want to say, so, so you get this bed taken, you know, you put down this bed, and then you, do you scatter the seeds in here? What do you do? Yeah, I went and got seeds from, again, a farm store. And this is the kind that you can um, buy to feed the birds in the wintertime. And so... Are they organic? Um, no, but there's, there wouldn't be any pesticide or insecticide on this. I've, they're washed. So, yeah, and it's what you're feeding the birds. So, yes. Um, you can use the black ones or the black and white striped ones, and they are very edible. We do this all the time. I'm giving Jan the third degree. Yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. I'm good. So, um, what happens is, it, what, what, what we try to do is put one of the same tray. It's like an inch and a half deep tray. You put that, um, Put a solid layer of seed on, on the soil and then wet it really good till the water's running through and it'll sit and soak a little bit. And then you put another black tray on top so it stays in the dark. And you keep it in the dark for three or four days because, especially with sunflowers, if you leave them out in really nice bright sunshine, they'll form so short that there won't be anything to eat. And so they'll form in an inch or less and you want tall. 
These are four to five inches tall now. Um, so we leave them um, under another uh, lid for three or four days until they're getting kind of white and kind of tall. And then um, two days ago, I took the tops off of all three of these and set them out on my porch. And they've just been beautifully greening the last few days. And with the sunflower seeds, what happens is that you um, eventually start to get the permanent leaves coming in between the two great big monocot leaves. And when that permanent leaf actually gets up to any size at all, the whole thing gets kind of bitter. And so you don't necessarily love it anymore. But they're extremely sweet right now. The kids at, at um, school just love them like this. So there's three things. I did. The sunflower is my favorite, and that's what we're going to eat tonight. Um, we've also got dwarf gray snow peas. And these will get up about six inches tall. They're only maybe three inches tall right now. Same thing, same mix of soil. Um, put a really solid mass of seed into the soil and then cover it up for three or four days. And these have probably got three or four days to go. With the, the gray peas, how you can tell that they're ready is um, at the top of the growing point, there's a tendril that starts to form. And when that tendril forms on the top, then there's also a fiber that starts to form in the main stem. And that fiber gets caught in your teeth, and people hate it. So we, we harvest when we start getting that uh, little dental floss. <laughs> Such an interesting methodology. I, I know. we got great methods. So you, any time, you just can go through and pick those. When we had these at the Iron Chef uh, a few days ago, we were just plucking them up out of the dirt and washing the dirt off the soil and eating the seed and all. And that works just great, too. The, these are organic seeds. And so... Um, and all you have to do is wash off the roots. The roots are, aren't, aren't going to hurt you. And this is vermicompost. And so that's the difference between the shoots and the sprouts. Sprouts are, are um, grown in a really humid, wet jar. And so bacteria can form in that jar, especially if it's a little bit dark. Um, bacteria can form and grow, and you can get salmonella and E. coli in, in that jar. With uh, shoots, which is what we have here tonight, they're grown in soil. And there's a lot of nice bacteria, good positive bacteria in the soil, which will keep us from getting the E. coli or the salmonella to form. And what is that one? That one is radishes, and we call that zesty. This is part of our zesty mix. The uh, zesty microgreens usually have a lot of radish and some uh, sorrel and some kale and some cabbage and broccoli. So you can put almost anything you want in there. But you'll see, I'll, I'll pass around all three of these, and you guys can kind of taste them tonight. The radish, when you first taste it, you think, oh, that was nothing. And then you let it sit in your mouth a minute, and pretty soon, oh, that's a familiar flavor. And then you wait another minute, and then, oh, it's radish. And so it, it has that, the flavors come out in it as, the, as time goes on. So it's a really like delicious. Like a good wine. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been playing with quinoa recipes all day. I've got a, a family harvest thing coming up uh, Friday. And so there's some really delicious quinoa recipes that have radish and zesties in them, like, like what we've got here. And so I'm practicing with that stuff. Is there a reference people can go to online to actually you know, learn how to do this really easily? You know, there's a lot of different places where that you can look up sprouts, and most of them have very adequate um, things, very adequate instructions for how to put it together. Um, the Hometown Harvest, my website, also has pretty adequate instructions. For shoots now, not sprouts. These are shoots, yes. But when you go online, nobody knows what shoots are. Microgreens is quite, in, in the cooking world, microgreens is what it is. In the growing world, it, we actually usually call them sprouts, but then in the kitchen world, again, the jars are with sprouts are not good, and so we're going to shoots, and so the, the, the vocabulary is challenging. Sounds like the process is pretty easy, so hopefully some people will try it out. And your website is? Hometown Harvest of Southeast Iowa. All that? All Hometown. That. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah you got to do the whole thing. Hometown Harvest of Southeast Iowa dot. Org. And the South is spelled out? Yeah, it is. Southeast. The whole thing. Everything. Okay, thank you for making it difficult for thank us. You. That's right. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll get to, we're going to get to taste these later. And uh, so. That'll be great, Jen. That's that's terrific. I want you to look at the in the oven. <gasps> Cupcakes! Oh my gosh, I I 
I could describe these to everyone who's listening, but you know they know what cupcakes look like when they're rising in the oven. And if they've watched Cupcake Wars, they know that people are, oh my gosh, our cupcakes aren't rising. What are we going to do? There's only 15 minutes left. Oh, Kurt Gowdy, what's going on? Not a whole lot, Steve. We got... Uh, Is he mic'd, by am, the way? I am mic'd. He's yeah. mic'd. So great. I'm, okay. I'm off. Um, I did a, just a basic cream cheese icing for the cupcakes tonight. Feel, pair up well with the pumpkin flavor of the cupcake. Um, that's just a pound of cream cheese and right around equal weight in powdered sugar. And you just cream those together in your mixer. Um, some people like to add vanilla to it. You can get a little crazy at the flavors, but I like just the basic cream cheese flavor with that. So a pound of cream cheese and a pound of powdered sugar. And if you want to add some flavor, you can put vanilla or almond or vanilla, whatever. Vanilla, almond, maple. Um, you can color that too. It colors real well with the, the confectioner's sugar in there. Um, and then also tonight I'm working on peanut butter cups. I've gone ahead and prepared some earlier this evening. Mm. They do take some time to temper. Um, I'm working with just a basic milk chocolate. And I've got it over a double boiler to uh, remelt the chocolate that I used earlier this evening. And I add about a half a tablespoon of olive oil to about 12 ounces of semi-sweet. Milk chocolate so a, a half a tablespoon of olive oil. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, and there's some out here that are without the olive oil that I made earlier on in the day. And you can kind of see a, sheen, a color difference in a, uh, a sheen on the ones that are used with olive oil. Um, when they come out of the mold, they've got a nice gloss to them. Uh, they do tend to come out of the mold a lot easier. With the olive oil. With a little bit of olive It'd oil. It'd be interesting. To, what, do you, what do you think about the taste difference? With using or not using the olive oil? I prefer the taste. With the olive oil? With the olive oil, and my kids do. Um, they only know what they're eating half the time. When I put stuff in there like olive oil, and, and they really en they, they actually enjoy it better than they do store-bought candies. So why olive oil versus another oil that wouldn't have as much flavor? Because I like the flavor that pairs up well with the chocolate. Um, I use a lot of milk chocolate around the house. I've tossed toffee bits in there when I make candy. Um, but the olive oil flavor is not so strong that it overpowers the chocolate. It just kind of complements it nicely. Very nice. Very nice. And then uh, we're just about ready to pour that chocolate into the mold. Molds really, um, plastic is preferred when you're doing chocolates. I use a, a mold that's produced by Wilton specifically for it, but you can use like a mini ice cube tray. Uh, those I've used full-size ice cube trays before, but that's a big chunk of chocolate. <laughs> so um, Try me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on top of it. Um, so many ice cube trays, there's different shapes available out there. There's silicone out there available, too, that are really easy to get out of. The harder, um, more, I would say, professionally designed molds are a little tougher to work with, and they also offer some in silicone. Um, it's just a matter of price and availability. I think silicone is easy for most. I think for home cooks, it's probably a really simple way to, to go with the molds. It is, even even on the professional side of things, um, because you can actually break your chocolates getting them out of the molds once they stiffen in there. So all I'm going to do is take the chocolate, heat it up to its, it's just a nice runny consistency to where it'll pour. And then we get over top of the mold using a rubber spatula and pushing the chocolate out and trying to get it as close to the cavity as I can, um, as not to waste a lot. Right. So when you're when you're when you're pouring that chocolate out, you want to get it right over the cavity of your mold. You do, and you can kind of push it around a little bit, kind of fill in the molds, because you're going to dump that chocolate back out a good amount of it to leave room for filling. Uh, tonight I'm using a uh, natural peanut butter by Skippy. That's a creamy peanut butter. It's a natural peanut butter by Skippy? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't... Yeah, it's, a, it's an all-natural peanut butter no, they're, Skippy. They're all getting it. into the game, right? <laughs> um, you can use stuff like uh, raspberry jams. Really kind of neat. Um, peanut butter and jelly, that would be really Peanut butter and jelly, really yeah. Nice. Yeah, because, I mean, there's enough room in, in some of these deeper molds, and especially if you use, like, an ice cube cream, you've got nice. ample room for what you're wanting to do. Um, different jellies. Uh now, Lacoons. how long will that take to set up then, Kurt? They take about uh, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how hot your chocolate is and how tempered you're trying to get it. You know, if you're using the fridge or 
um, room temperature. Now, what I want to know is, you've taken the mold and you're actually turned it upside down over your chocolate uh, bowl that's on top of the double boiler, and yep. chocolate's dripping out of your mold, and I'm trying to figure out <laughs> what's going on here. I completely filled the cavity with the chocolate as to create the sidewall of my of my mold. Fill the sidewalls in. I'll bring it over here in the mirror. Chocolate does not come loose from the sidewalls. It just no, it doesn't. It actually, the of because the, the, the mold is actually at room temp and your chocolate's higher, when it hits that side, it kind of seizes up a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, begins the tempering process actually as soon as it hits your mold. Interesting. Um, so you kind of got to move quickly depending on how you want to fill it. And so now you've got chocolate sidewalls. I've got a chocolate top and sidewall, and then I've dumped it back out so I've got a hollow cavity to fill with whatever. And we're putting peanut butter in there. We are putting because peanut you're butter in there tonight. Homemade peanut butter cups, right. essentially. Wow. Okay, now, there was one thing that I was a little concerned about. You said it's going to take 45 minutes for yep. those things? I made what do we of, do? I uh, made, what are we going to do in the meantime? You know, 45 minutes, if I'm doing these at home, I'll take the dog for a walk. Just <laughs> let him sit. <laughs> Actually, he's, he's talking about us tonight. <laughs> what are we going to do? I've got plenty made in the... have a dog here. <laughs> I've got plenty made in the refrigerator oh, for you. Thank goodness. Oh, a collective sigh of relief from everybody. I bet you guys thank you, Kurt. Can and make it <laughs> thank you for thinking of us. All, uh, all right, Frank, can you can you show us how to make some lassi and tell us a little bit how to make some lassi? And uh, maybe it's also good to know um, if we have to to get from a doctor antibiotica. Are you saying English? Antibiotic medicine, it weakens your immune system. And fresh yogurt is making it up again. The immune system is rising up again. So uh, the Ayurveda doctors, I was for five years the chef of the Marishi Ayurveda clinic in Bad Ems. It is one of the most famous all over Europe. And the doctors always said if somebody had to have the medicine, he should drink for one week a fresh lassi and then the whole immune system will be perfect again. So lassi is a very simple thing, but I tell you, it should be good quality of yogurt. This is very important. And you need about three times the amount of, of water, of fresh water, and uh, one third you need yogurt. So I also want to say I'm happy that Americans taking so much care for the health like you are doing, to teach uh, the people. I'm, I'm looking forward that America will rise, you know, in health system, you know. And I also like your president, Mr. Obama. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, but I love him, you know. Because he's in Germany, you know, you would be crazy if somebody said you have no right to get a health system, you know, and giving insurance, you know. This is normal in Germany since 50 or 60 years. So I'm happy that you have a very good president. I'm sorry to say it, you know. No, that's great. I think it's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> the show has become uh, it's a paid political announcement. Uh, uh, hi, I'm President Obama, and I approve this message. <laughs> All right, so we've got three parts water to one part yogurt. Yes. And, and best quality ingredients, of course, as you mentioned. Yes, and then I take some coconut milk, adding to it. Now, how much coconut milk compared to? Uh, I would say a uh, little bit less than a third. A little bit less than a third. And then now it is from you. A third of what? Sorry, Frank. Uh, from the whole amount. From the whole amount. Well, okay, yes. so you've got three parts water, one part yogurt, and a little bit less than one third then of that coconut milk. Yes, to give a nice coconut uh, taste. And uh, now I refine it with your vanilla sugar you made at home. Yes, some vanilla because sugar. When we had some black lassi, you know, then I saw in your kitchen that you're making very good quality of vanilla sugar, you know. With, in Germany, you say Bobo vanilla. You just take the fresh vanilla and cut it through all the long sides and then put it into a glass container and add good quality of sugar. And every day, you know, I said, life is bliss. Then you da dance for a few minutes like this. You know? <laughs> and, Frank's, Frank's and dancing around. After three me. days, you have vanilla sugar, you know. <laughs> not, not all the time dancing, but five minutes each day keeps you healthy. So now we refine it with uh, vanilla sugar, and then it's done. I just take whisk, and then 
We can eat it. We can yeah. drink it. And there are variations of that, right? I mean, you can oh, do oh many variations like cardamom or saffron. Or yes, you can. You can uh, card you can take cardamom, saffron, cinnamon, and you can uh, add also, for instance, fresh raspberries or fresh strawberries. And but the most healthy uh, thing is which is making your digestive system well after you have taken antibiotic medicine is salt lassi. So you have three types of water, one part of uh, fresh yogurt, and then you take salt and cumin and coriander in roasted uh, in a pan without any fat. That when it starts to smell, when you smell cumin and coriander smelling, then you stop it, take it from the pan, and when it's getting cold, you're taking out from uh, your kitchen, the old, uh, when you're uh, making the coffee, you know, the coffee um, Grind. grinder, and then you grind it and add some salt. We prefer in Ayurveda more the salt from the rock salt. Rock salt is not that heavy uh, because sea salt is sometimes warming up too much the body. So we take rock salt and then we add it to the lassi and take the whisk and so much salt until the lassi is until the yogurt is not any more sour. And then you stop. And then you drink it for one week and your nervous system and everything is healthy again. Frank, where on the net can people find some of your videos and recipes? Yes, I am also on YouTube. On YouTube, all right. And it's called YouTube slash, how you? How you YouTube forward slash. Yes, and then uh, Frandra, F R. A N D R A. Okay. Or you're just looking for Frank Lotz. Or you can search it. for Frank Lotz, L O T Z. Uh, or you can do YouTube and it's a forward, forward slash F R A N D R F R F R A N D R A. R A. Because my wife is Andrea and I was putting to, to get the name Frank and Andrea because. Got it. My wife is a very great lady. I okay. want to honor her because she made my book working, you know. She's a very good and business show, lady. And hold up your book again so everybody can see it. And the yes. audience, the listening audience, it's Heavenly Cooking with Ayurveda by Frank Lotz. So the first credit goes to my master, Marishi Mahesh Yogi, from whom I'm all I learned. The second to my wife. And the third to my grandmother, Mina. <laughs> That's <laughs> yes. great. Thank you, That's Frank. It, yes. And we'll taste that. We're going to taste that in just a few minutes. Kelly Vetter, tell us about what you've got cooking. I've got grown-up caramels. Gr really? Yeah. Grown-up caramels. Caramels. Amaretto, oh, of course. I see. Amaretto caramels. Amaretto okay. Grown caramels. Uh, by the way, then that means you know you have to. We have to see your ID before I you do. can taste these, right? <laughs> I have to see it. Okay. So basically, caramels are really, really easy to make. So what I have in here is one stick of butter. I've already chopped it up into little chunks, and I put it over a medium to low heat. Let it melt down. At the same time as that's starting to melt, you're going to throw in your butter or your sugar. I've got one and a half cups, or I'm sorry, one cup of white sugar, a half cup of brown sugar. Kelly, if you need a cheat sheet. Oh, well, I actually cut this recipe in a half so that we wouldn't make such a large one. So I'm remembering, sorry. Okay, so, and a half cup of corn syrup. And one and a half cups of cream. This is a really, uh, I, I, I'm kind of getting a feeling from the show. This is a, we're not on Weight Watchers. Uh, <laughs> I'm eating the sprouts. Oh. Kathy's eating the shoots. Kathy's eating the shoots, right. Oh, oh, well, you know, I'm tra planning on taking up two seats on the plane. <laughs> well, we wanted to do, we want to do a candy making theme today for a Halloween. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to be handing out uh, dark chocolate truffles or grown-up caramels, but you might have some fun do making candy in your own home since it is the season of candy and Halloween. I think it's a great idea, and we're so happy that you guys are doing this. It's really a lot of fun. Kelly's going to Spain in November yes. to compete in a tapas contest, right? Yes, I am. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah. you had to actually qualify, essentially, yeah. right? 92 people. Um, worldwide competed 
14 were chosen out of the 92. Um, I was one of the 14 chosen, and um, I actually seated third out of the 14. So I'm kind of proud of myself, but really nervous. So, so. we're going to be really excited to have you back on the show after you come back from Spain to tell us how you did and also to create your tapas award-winning recipe for us. Sounds like a winner. But we don't even have to wait that long because next week... You are going to be here in the kitchen with us again, and hopefully Kirk Gowdy is going to be here too. And we, our guest is going to be Jean Sauvage, whose new book, Gluten-Free Cooking, Gluten-Free Baking for the Holidays, is coming out either this week or next week. And Jean will be on with us. It's our, going to be our first show. Caleb Flynn is, uh, is uh, going to make sure that we're all engineered properly, properly to do our first Skype video show. And Jason Strong's going to hope that uh, there aren't lines all over the uh, rebroadcast that, that shows up on FMC video. But uh, you're going to be baking some things from her book, which will be terrific. And this is something that's dear to both of you because you both have kids who need to eat gluten-free. Mine's so. sitting right there in the front row. That's right. That's right. So, that's all right, go back to the okay, well, caramels. It's always nice to have a candy thermometer. Caramels need to bake between 240 to 250. That's uh, right between softball and hardball stage. If you don't have a candy thermometer, it's okay because what you're going to do is you're going to watch this caramel change color. It's going to go from a really light, happy, oh, almost a cream color. I'm going to hold up Frank's book here. It's going to start out this color. Three minutes. Sarah, my friend, says three minutes. So it goes to this dark color. And so, so that's basically all there is to it. Once it reaches that color and that point, you're just going to dump it into a buttered pan with foil or paper or something in it and let it cool. Um, when it gets to that point, wait, I almost forgot the important part. You do not add your flavoring until after you pull it from the heat. And so, because basically you're just going to cook all your flavoring right on out. So when it comes off the heat before I pour it in the pan, I'm going to add two really nice tablespoons. You know, Julia Child style <laughs> tablespoons, a little for me, <laughs> into that, whisk it all around, and then we're going to pour it in the pan and let it cool. Mm. So, okay, so easy. the most critical part of is this is the temperature. Temperature, okay. Temperature, yep. Right between softball and hardball, you need to have a really good thermometer. Yep, yep. We borrowed this from Chef Mark. He threatened me that I had to bring it back tomorrow. I was going to pay with my fingers and toes, so. Oh, you know, I'm sure that we could have found one here and where are you going you can't leave now we have all these things to eat you you better come back and sit down this is a friend of mine that i'm just chastising before she walks out the door i agree no, i was going to talk about that oh yes we can talk about it um with everybody afterwards because we're actually running so yeah we're getting really tight because we didn't have anything going on on this show it was just we had to like sit around thinking about what we were going to say so so basically, that I'm going to let it cook to that point. Here is some wonderful samples. I've also thrown in almonds in there because almonds and amaretto go together in my world. And in Sarah's because she helped me. We were sitting there going, hmm, what nuts would we like to add into this? And I said almonds. I said, all right, sounds good with amaretto. <laughs> and cocoa. <laughs> and, and you know what? You guys are the prime examples of what everything we've been talking about in terms of having fun in the kitchen, which translates right into the food and being able to enjoy it. I'll go to America, you know, to USA. <laughs> they, I feel very at home here. I'm very happy to please to be here. All right. Well, thank you all very much for coming. You've been listening to Great Taste on KRUU FM 100.1, the solar-powered voice of Fairfield, Iowa. 60 minutes of delicious radio. Thank you, Indian Hills. Thank you, Frank Lotz. Thank you, Kathleen Dubois, Caleb Flynn, Jason Strong, and everyone who's here, Tom Allen. We'll be back from High V live next week with Gene Sauvage. Red taste, sweet, sour, so good to taste.